But what I want to do primarily is one thing. I want to testify to this. I want to testify of our Heavenly Father's wonderful, saving presence in our lives. Our Heavenly Father's wonderful, rescuing presence in our lives. In hopes that when your life is difficult, when you're facing times of uncertainty, overwhelming odds, difficulties, darkness, that you'll be inspired to remember the promise of Scripture, that the Father is with you. And in those times, that would be for you, as it has been for my family and I, enough to know that your Father who loves you is with you and He sustains and holds you in the darkest hours of your time here on earth. When life hurts, when things are messy and seem out of control, when all is unfair, unkind, and seems to be ending badly. What is the issue? And what does it mean to not be afraid? That's ludicrous. What does it mean to not be afraid? And what does it mean to fear God in those times? Jesus explains, verse 29, Are not two sparrows sold for a cent? And yet not one of them will fall to the ground apart from your Father. Therefore, do not fear. He doesn't say that a sparrow will never fall. He says the sparrows will fall. Christ and Scripture are very very forthright. Bad things happen. Even to innocent little birds. Bad things happen. Tragic, unfair, senseless things happen in this world and in our lives. That's just the way it is. What he's saying is they do not happen apart from your Father who is in heaven. Bad things happen, but they do not happen apart from your Father. God is never absent from the equation. As the NIV puts that phrase, sparrow will not fall outside of your father's care. Bad things happen, but it never means that your heavenly father doesn't care. Jesus says, don't, don't be afraid of what can kill you. Cancer is not the thing to fear. Fear God. Fear God. Don't fear circumstances. Fear God don't fear people. Fear God, don't fear pain. Fear God, don't fear death. Fear God, don't fear what they might do to you. Fear God, don't fear rejection. He says in an interesting way, fear him who can throw both body and soul into hell. Kind of strong language. In the New Living Translation, it says, don't be afraid of those who want to kill your body. They can't touch your soul. Fear only God. The idea being, he's the one who's greater exemplified by the phrase who can destroy both soul and body in hell. People can only do so much to you, but God is far greater. He holds eternity in his hands. He's getting that. He's trying to make the disciples think about the things of eternity. Don't be overwhelmed by the mere temporal circumstances as bad as they are. I want you to think about eternal things and let it bring you to the fear of God. This is what it means to fear God. To fear God is to revere respect, honor, extol, and trust him enough to believe by faith that he is good, sovereign, and present when life is hard, cool, and out of control. That's what it means to fear God. And then to honor him in that way. You see, life is always going to present things that will incite fear, right? Illness, Pending death, rejection, financial hardships, failure, loneliness, abandonment, the unknown, loss of control. And when these things happen, we have a choice to either fear God or fear everything else. And to fear God at the very minimum means to trust Him. Everything around you is saying He can't be trusted. Faith in the pace of pain is this. Trusting God's goodness despite any apparent evidence against it. Jesus moves us to this logic. The 
reason that we don't have to be afraid is nothing hard happens apart from our Father's care. So we, we can't accuse God anymore of not caring. Jesus said that's not true. He always cares. He's always present. And His presence proves that He cares. And it soothes our fears. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. Why? For thou art with me. It's the only answer to that question. I'm in the valley of shadow of death. I won't fear evil. Why? For thou art with me.